part three. Read it with me carefully and help guide me in what I'm actually going to write for my working because it's very important the way they communicate this, okay? It says, what's the probability that this particular student is extension one maths if it is known that they chose extension one English? Did I get the order right? Yeah, okay. So how am I going to write this? We want to know if they're extension one maths if it's known that they're extension one English. What are we going to do first? Zaki. Probability of M is bars, which you call that Bar, pipe, whatever. <laughs> that thing. Very good. Nailed it. Now, by the way, quick point, right? This is clearly different to this, isn't it? Part two and part three. They're asking different things. So the order is very important when we think about this, right? Now when we have a think about it, we can do this in one of two ways, okay? Before, we just went straight to a formula, and then we looked at the diagram. Let's try and do this in reverse, just to make sure we're convinced of what we've come up with, right? The probability of this given that. So let's focus on this given that first. What this means is, as we mentioned before, I know information so I can exclude some things from my diagram, right? So let's come back over here. I think, uh, what was it? Uh, is this 27? And then 42, is that right? Just doing it from memory, okay? So who, I've got one, two, three, four numbers. Who can I exclude on this diagram? I can exclude the 42. Why can I exclude the 42? They're, they're not involved in English or maths, so they certainly can't be one of these students. Agreed? So I'm just going to wipe them off for a second. Are there any numbers, other numbers I can get rid of? I can get rid of the 95. I know this can't be it because these students did not choose extension English, and that's kind of my condition. Is there anyone else I can get rid of? No, these guys are in my hallowed circle, okay? So that's good. So what I've got now is a new sample space. It's over... We calculate this number, right? 56. It's up there in red up the top right hand corner. Okay? So there's a new sample space, right? Is that, could I say that to be N of E? That is, right? That's exactly what the formula would have told me if I'd just recited it. Okay, now up the top, which is the particular group I'm interested in within that? The 27 or the 29? It's a 29, right? Because I'm interested in the people who do maths. That's the problem that I'm after, right? So this number is 29. How would I state that using my probability and set notation? It would be N of what? M intersect E. Now, just quick note, look up for a second, and make sure you look at this. Sorry, let me complete the fraction, right? This number 29, doesn't it look familiar? Didn't we just use this? The 29 that's here is the same as the 29 up here, right? Why is that the same? Because the intersection of E and M is the intersection of M and E. Aha! The intersection E intersect M is the same as M intersect E. So I could actually say, and you can see it here in the diagram, right? Um, sorry, another color. These guys in here, no matter which way you look at it, M intersect E equals E intersect M. M. So the way we would say this, the technical way is, we would say intersection, and actually when you think about it, also union, they are commutative. That's what happens when you can just switch the order, like addition, multiplication, and it makes no difference. Okay? Can I simplify that? No. It's done, right? It's done. Okay. Very good. Last one, let's do this one all together. It's the probability of, can you tell me what to write? What's it after? M. I'm actually not going to say bar, because bar usually means the thing over the top. So I'm going to put my pipe. It's E, E complement. And actually, that's called E bar. So anyway, words, notation. You can see what I mean, right? All right, so this is what I'm interested in. So I'm going to go straight to the formula here. I don't even think. That's the great thing about formulas. Once you understand them, you can simply use them. It puts things into autopilot for you. I'm going to write up the top here. This is my new favorable uh, event. So it's going to be M intersect E Complement, right? All over N of E complement. All right, have a look. What are the numbers? Let's do it from the table. Why not? Have a look. Here's E complement, right? So what's N of E complement? Have a look. 95. Have a look. It's the, it's the whole row, isn't it? It's 137. Okay, so there's my denominator. And then over the top, M intersect E complement. M E complement, there's the intersection. Isn't it? 95. Flip the table, walk off, you're done. Okay? So when you think about it, right? 
Both of these tools have their own advantages. What you need to be able to do is construct both of them and interpret both of them equally well. One last thing before we finish, because now you've got a lot of tools at your disposal, right? There are, roughly speaking, I can think, one, two, three, four tools that we can talk about. I can't think of a nice acronym to come up with that. Um, there are four main tools that we use to visualize what is happening in the sample space and the favorable events. Two of them are on the board right now. What would you call them? What would you call this thing? This whole thing, this object up here. It's a table, right? A table is super useful, okay. What was this thing we called? Venn diagram, right? What was the object we used when we were thinking about the dice? The array, also called a dot diagram. Oh, I take it back, there's five. Um, the tree diagram which we looked at recently. Now the last one, which most of us often forget, is just, if it's a simple enough situation, and frequently in advance it will be, just list out the options, right? If you are flipping two coins, and there's heads and tails, don't draw a Venn diagram, just list them out. There are only four options. Head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail, you're done. Okay, before someone's finished drawing their circles, okay? So don't forget you have all of these options and being able to see that you can equivalently represent a situation with any of them is really important. All right, I'm gonna shut up and get out of your way. If you have any questions, I'll come around to you. Or did you wanna, uh, yep. Yeah. question for B, like how do you know which total we're using? Uh, Sorry, you're talking about this one? Yeah. Four? How did we know I was using this one as opposed to what might have your other option been? 124, which is this one. Okay, this is actually really important. Leslie's asked a good question, and I'm going to see because Leslie's the only one who's asked it, unless you're about to ask exactly the same question. So that indicates to me, hopefully, you all know the answer to this because you didn't ask. So I want to make sure I've still got everyone's attention. Thank you, Shazza. The question was, and that's a good question from Leslie, why did I use the 137, that's this guy, as opposed to the 124? Because they're both plausible. They'll even give you similar answers anyway. Why this one? What do you reckon, Azza? Because that um, row, like that column would also include the people that, who are doing exception English. Okay, hold on. Let me just make sure I've got your language. You talked about a column, are you talking about this column here? Yeah. So this column here, if we were to use this 124, which I did not use, right? It would include this group and this group. These two groups here. Now, this group here, as Hans was pointing out, this group is problematic. Why shouldn't I include this? Have a look at the question. Yeah, it's not it's not the, not the condition, the, the piece of information that you know, is that this is not an extension one English student. So that's why I should pretend that this doesn't exist. In fact, I'm pretending this whole row does not exist, which is why I only get left with this row, Hence the 137. Does that clarify? Cool.